tucked away on Main Street here in Cooperstown is Moni's Used Bookstore. Come on in here if you like books because they have about 350,000 different books. I went looking for Mark Twain. I found him and sure as shooting, they had my favorite book by him, Puddinhead Wilson. For those of you who go back a few years, this building used to house something else. It would have to be pretty large to now have 350,000 books. It was Cook's Garage. Cars were kept on the second floor and the ramp that gets to the second floor is still here. When you come to Cooperstown, park your car someplace and then get out and take a walk. And you're going to find things all over the village. For example, I'm on the corner of Lake Street and River Street. And uh, that's because the lake meets the river here. And uh, it's a gorgeous little corner of Cooperstown. It was here that Council Rock existed, where the Indians had their meetings. And uh, you get a feeling of history when you come here today. The river of River Street is the Susquehanna. It starts right here in Cooperstown at the tip of Otsego Lake. This is where it begins its 444 mile trek to the Chesapeake Bay. And along the way, it passes Bassett Hospital. We head down the Susquehanna to Bassett Healthcare. In celebration of Women's History Month, we share the story of a woman who devoted herself to the sick and unfortunate of Cooperstown. We learn about Mary Imogene Bassett from Dr. John S. Davis, a retired physician whose career spanned over 40 years at Bassett Healthcare. Mary Imogene Bassett was born to Wilson T. Bassett, MD, in his practice home in Mount Vision, New York, and her mother later became a doctor too, so she was raised by two physicians. Uh, she decided she wanted to become a doctor too, unusual to have women doctors in those days. Uh, but she uh, went to the Women's College of, of Pennsylvania to get her MD degree, I think it was 1887. In the meantime, the family had moved to Cooperstown for their practice. So she went to assist her father in his practice in Cooperstown. When he died later in 1903, I believe it was, she then continued on the practice herself. She was admitting her patients to the Thanksgiving Hospital, those who needed admission. One of her patients was Mr. Edward Severin Clark, distinguished philanthropist of Cooperstown. Uh, at one point she asked whether he would be willing to, is, is said to have asked whether she would be willing, to, he would be willing to uh, build a new laboratory in the Thanksgiving hospital and he went one better than that and said we're going to build a new hospital. So during the latter part of World War I, the Mary Imogene Bassett Hospital was built and uh, at it was completed about 1918 and used as a rehabilitation center for Air Force officers suffering from nerve shock, in the, as it was called in those days. Finally then, the hospital opened in 1922 to the public, this wonderful, modern, unusual hospital in a rural, small rural community. Today, Bassett Healthcare is a system of physicians, providers, hospitals, and community health centers in eight counties. The system stretches more than 5,000 square miles, has more than 2,500 employees, and sees half a million patients a year. Travis, boy, do you remember? Travis, have you lost your mind? Travis, never lose direction. The Cooperstown Diner has been here for nearly 90 years. It's a tiny little place. As a matter of fact, its address is, one, is 136 and a half Main Street, Cooperstown. Uh, come on down here and try their homemade food. It may be small in size, but I can tell you this. I had the biggest cheeseburger here that I have had any place in my travels. It was this big, and it was just a couple ounces short of a pound. People come to the diner because they love our staff and they love our food. Our burgers and cinnamon roll french toast. Off season we get the local people and when it's on season the local people find somewhere else to go. <laughs> Stay away from downtown? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> come down here today and tell them that you love Mohawk Valley Living and you can have one of their world famous cinnamon bun uh, french toasts. I guess that's what you pronounce it and you can get the second one for half price.
You can have it as breakfast today, or you can do what I did and have it for dessert. Spurbeck's grocery store is right across the street from the railroad station here in Cooperstown. It's the Susquehanna Railroad that goes from here, used to go from here to, uh, I think, Oneana. And the nice thing about this store is they, they have what I used to buy, uh, penny candy. So I'm going to use some of my big paycheck, which I can afford maybe, I don't know, five of these at a penny apiece, and uh, treat myself to some Tootsie Rolls. <laughs> I didn't realize this, but there's no state tax in New York State until you reach eight cents. So I got this for a nickel. Wow. We travel out of the village into the beautiful countryside overlooking Otsego Lake to gold petals. Ellen White Weir's interest in the therapeutic properties of the humble calendula herb has led to a cottage industry. Little bit of Mainly, it's a place where I grow my flowers and make my products, which are all mostly calendula-based, um, all healing for the skin. I always wanted to make a product after being in retail for 20-plus years. I, I wanted to have something that I made from the ground up that was um, healthy and pretty and that I could try and market, and this is what I came up with. I do the farmer's market in Cooperstown in the summer and into the fall every Saturday or mostly every Saturday. I have a calendar on my website which is goldpetals.com and I also have a general store on my website so people can purchase my products from the website. It's time for the Cooper's Road Trip. It's time